Father, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the laborers who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provisions of our necessity and the relief of all those who are in need. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'd like to call this regular and scheduled meeting of the Cabinet County Commission to order. The Commission meets on the second and fourth Thursday of each month, this being a Thanksgiving week falling on our Thursday meeting day, we have moved the meeting to Tuesday, which we do every year. And just about, it almost always falls on our meeting day. So, but this is a regular meeting of the Capital County Commission, and I'd like to call it to order at this time. The first item we have is the approval of the November 24, 2020, regular commission agenda. So moved. Second. Okay. Commission's remained has been seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Next item is approval of the minutes of the regular commission meeting on October 22nd, 2020. Second. Second. Motion's been made, it's been set. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Next item is approval of erroneous assessments and land consolidation, split tickets, probate documentation, county clerk's probate office. So moved. Second. Motion's been made. It's been seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. <coughs> Motion carries. Next item is approval of purchase orders 21100739 through 21100927 and pay jackets, monthly payments, the fifth third for fuel card purchases, handwritten checks of $6,690.81 to them, and $20,471.44 to Guardian. So moved. Second. Motion's been made, it's been seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Next item we have on the agenda is where we allow citizens to speak to us about anything they'd like to talk to us about. We have a time limit of five minutes. And if the item you're going to speak about is on our agenda, we wait until we get to that item to discuss it. If it's not on our agenda, then you can go ahead and talk about it now. We'll move on to the next item, which is an affidavit for authentication of a will in the estate of Mary Catherine Perkins. This is a situation where uh, a will is not been found in the original. They are requesting that uh, they be allowed to probate a copy of the will. Uh, in order to do so, they have to provide an affidavit that states that they have made a diligent search and cannot find it, uh, and that it due to this place for loss, and to their knowledge, we find a page that uh, in the case that the will has never changed the thing as far as beneficiaries are concerned. So moved. I think there was an error on the address for that affidavit. Does it need to be uh, changed or amended? I looked it up on line and the address is wrong. Okay. For the attorney by which they received the copy of which, the address. Which, uh, what's the address? It's 222 San Marco Avenue. Okay. Instead of 222 City. Okay. We'll just make a note of that. Just a second. Motion's been made, it's been seconded. Is there any discussion? Is there anyone here with that estate that would like to speak? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Next item is a resolution in the matter of a resolution dissolving the Cabell County Airport Authority. And at this time, we have lots of people, I think, that want to talk about that. 
So we'll move on down this list and hear from these folks before we take action on the item. First, we have Jim Godwell. Jim. Good morning. Um, I think I first need to make it clear that I'm not here in my official capacity. I'm uh, here uh, as a private citizen and as a uh, pilot of uh, about 40 years. Um, I uh, learned to fly back in 1980 or so at Charleston Airport. And one of the first things I did, my, my instructor, I had the benefit of an instructor who was very emergency procedure oriented. And uh, while he was training me, he would pull the power, pull the throttle back, and say, where are you going to land? In West Virginia, anybody that flies in West Virginia knows that you always have to have your head out the window looking for a place to, to sit down if you, if you need to in an emergency, especially if you don't fly with one engine in front of you. One of the first places he taught me to land was off, off of a big, nice, wide uh, concrete runway like a tri-state was at Robert Newell. And I quickly found out that while you can practice soft fields and short field landings as a, as a young pilot on a nice big wide long concrete runway, there is absolutely nothing like learning how to fly and land and take off from a, a grass strip like Robert Newland. Uh, you can practice it all day long, but until you experience it, both as a student pilot and then continue to uh, maintain your proficiency as a, as a pilot doing the same thing over the years, uh, you just won't have the same training. And I think pilots flying in West Virginia with the ability to land and take off at Robert Newland have something that a lot of folks, a lot of pilots out west, for example, have lots of wide open spaces to put their plane down anywhere they don't have. Uh, while I am here today as a, as a private citizen, I also am a member of the Central West Virginia Regional Airport Authority in Charleston Board. And as you may know, We've worked for the last couple of years on opening the Marshall University Bill Nose School of, Avi of Aviation. It's currently uh, under construction and will open late next year, later next year. One of the things that, one of the benefits of Robert Newland will be for pilots as they learn to fly at the Marshall University Aviation School will be to be able to come into Robert Newland and land and take off and learn how, what, how to actually land and take off on a soft field, which is a huge difference, folks. Huge difference. So I am not familiar, I don't know what this whether this resolution will have the impact that I'm told it will have, that it will close Robert Newland Field, but I simply wanted to bring this to your attention today, um, these other considerations, and ask that you, you take these things into consideration, the impact that it's going to have on the pilot community around here, not only from a from an educational standpoint, but also from a pilot proficiency standpoint, and how important Robert Newland Field is to those of us who are in the aviation community. And I hope that you will take that into consideration as you deliberate. Thank you. Thank you. The next person we're going to hear from is Harry Moore.
have eaten a lot of hundred dollar airport hamburgers, but the fly in restaurant we have some incredible food. If y'all have not eaten there, please come by and eat. It's just amazing good food. And so the only thing I have to ask is I don't know what the action's going to be taken, but please be kind and be good towards the airport and the jewelry that have been Thank you. Next we have Scott Boss. Good morning. Uh, I'm a member of the Airport Authority Board, and I was on the county commission at the time that this lease was signed uh, the board, and I just wanted to shed a little light on the subject. Uh, I know Mr. Rainey and Jennifer and Johnson wasn't here at the time. Uh, when that, what brought that up a long time ago was we had an insurance broker that each year got us bids on insurance. And she brought to our attention that there was no insurance on the airport field up there. And that we had liability there. So at that time, we went dealing with the de facto board at that time because they hadn't been doing anything. And we gave them the steps they needed to take to get back into compliance. Uh, they had to have members. They had to have meetings. They had to decide what they were going to do. They had to have insurance, that being the big thing. And they did all of those things. They did every one of those things. And when they did all those things, at that time, the county commission recognized the authority and the authority recommended signing the lease with Carl Bailey to operate the airport. Mr. Watson was the county attorney and him and I'm trying to remember the attorney's name that, that Carl Bailey had at the time. Was it uh, John, Hankins. John Hankins? The two attorneys came up with that lease representing both parties, and that lease was signed in good faith. And it's been in good faith all this time. There have been airport, airport board meetings all this time. There's been insurance all this time. It's been operated all this time. And now all of a sudden somebody's saying it doesn't exist and it's not proper. It was proper at the time. We gave them the steps they needed to do to get it in compliance. They did it. We recognized it, and we negotiated that lease in, lease in good faith. And I think if you violate that lease, you're going to have a lot of exposure for a lawsuit because that lease was done in good faith. And all three county commissioners, two of you are not, were not here at the time. There is another county commissioner that was at the time. And I think he will probably remember pretty close to the way I remember. So I think you all need to think real hard about whether you dissolve this board. I don't know what the purpose is. But I can't understand why you would want to do away with a good thing that a lot of people use and enjoy. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Tom Starr. I hope you can hear me. Our commissioner is Attorney Watson. Uh, I drove five hours to be here because it's the Thanksgiving holiday, like a lot of people. Uh, on, so I'm going out of town. I think it's a sad day for Cabell County and for the state of West Virginia. We have a significant issue evidenced by the people that are here a day and a half before Thanksgiving in the middle of COVID with a week's notice and not a notice sent out to all stakeholders. My biggest <coughs> concern is that there'll be an elimination of the airport authority. We don't need to go through all the history. Ms. Bias has done some, there'll be a lot of others. Cabell County Commission paid 50000 for the property and 150000 for the in the West Virginia Aeronautical Association. It has been a benefit to this community ever since. The airport authority was created in order to run that airport and to lease it. Because as those of you know, the Cabell County Commission cannot lease or sell to a private entity. So if you eliminate, dissolve the Cabell County Airport Authority today, I will give you credit. It will eliminate the lease. And more than that, you won't be able to negotiate a new lease because you are not entitled to lease property except to a nonprofit or federal government, state or federal government agency. I think this is too much to happen this quickly. There are a lot of issues out there. For instance, you cannot shut down an airport under federal aviation law regulations without giving advance notice. Not my area of expertise. I think you are talking about close to a year. Why? They develop maps. Pilots have those maps. 
and they need to know that there is an airport there if there is an emergency and need to land. You've heard and you will continue to hear about the economic benefit to this community. We are talking about close to 20,000 people last year that visited that airport and brought money to the Cabell County community and to the state of West Virginia. <coughs> that hasn't changed. When this lease was entered into original and the sublease, both of them say that it would be rent free because the airport authority through on its own and through its uh, sub lessee would be responsible for the maintenance, the repair, and upkeep of that airport. It has never been a money-making endeavor. If somebody thinks it has, we'll open the books. It has not. I don't know the reason or motivation behind this. This is an important business entity, an economic benefit to the community, and raises the quality of life in this community. I don't know what the alternative uses are. It's in a flood zone. You're not going to be able to use it for much of anything else. I agree with Mr. Bias about the good faith and the effort to enter into this lease. The, the extent that the leases have any kind of problems with them, those problems will come back not only to the airport authority, but more importantly to the Cabell County Commission. I think some people will talk about what's out there. And it's a 2,300 foot runway, the only grass field in the state of West Virginia. There's airlines that are hangered there. There's sightseeing and tourist flights that are taken. Boy Scouts have been out there. Other organizations. There's certainly a hope from Marshall University with its aviation program. We have an RV park. We have camping. There's a path that's used by members of the public, a walking path. 